You never been a leader, or you want to be a leader, or you tried in your leadership, try to lead a team, but you failed, didn't work out for you, or you already been a leader, but you want to be a bigger leader. Today, I'm going to show you how to lead a team with the leadership power toward success. I'm going to show you one, two, three, four, only four things which is going to change the whole way of leadership and make you a leader which can gonna be able to let you lead a much more bigger team with a lot more impact. So it's only four, not a lot. So let's get ready. In this channel, constantly, every day, one skill. We are sharing it. Every day, one skill. So go ahead and hit the subscribe button in the bottom, in the right left corner. So every day, you can learn a new skill about it. Okay, so I say that there are four things I'm going to tell you, which going to get you a leader, which can make you a more, much more bigger leader or turn into a leader or make your team towards success. So that four things. Let's get started. Number one. When you want to be a leader, pick the biggest and most difficult task of your team. You may think about, oh my God, if I said biggest task or most difficult one, how can I lead the team? But absolutely, when you want to be lead a team toward your goal, to your success, you have to be taking the biggest task and most difficult task. And not necessarily you need to complete this one. You can take the most hardest task for yourself and then keep working on it and then you can break it to the multiple pieces. And then when it goes much more easier, then you can get your team members involved with you. So first, you could get the best hardest work get done from you. Second, you learn because you are doing the most hardest work. And third, your team members start to respect you more because you are courageous enough and showing them how to do this one too. So what does it call? leadership by example. So this is a great way to fix your leadership. So number one point, pick the biggest and more difficult work and break it down when it comes to almost finish. Then you get people or when you, when you could break down to multiple small pieces, which has become much more easier already, then you give it to your teammates. That's that, that is the tip number one. Pick the most difficult task in the team. Number two, give credit. When You've been thinking, I am a leader of the team. It's my position. I am the most important one. And that is exactly the moment you are not a leader anymore. You are turning into a manager. And when you're turning into a manager, your potential, your success, your growth, everything going to be very, very small. You don't want to be that. You want to be a leader. You want to be a bigger leader. You want to be more higher level leaders. So start giving credit to your team. Best way of doing this one is give almost all the credit to your teammates. Don't give anything for yourself. And that is one of the way you will build much more bigger, better relationship with your team and you will stay motivated to seeing that how your teammates are contributing and your teammate will keep working with you too because they love working with you. It's very important. If your teammates doesn't love working with you, you are struggling with your leadership skill. So that's number tips number two give all the credit for your teams. So now I'm going to give you the tips number three, the third tips. It's here is communicate, communicate, communicate and communicate. Everything you are working on, constantly communicate. What even other teammates are working on, con communicate that thing to other teammates. But here, not just only communicate or not just only follow up. It's very important. When you communicate, communicate with two very very important thing communicate with empathy and communicate with appreciation empathy appreciation remember it empathy and appreciation when you are using these two in your communication your communications will be very different let me give you an example let's say one of the teammates could not finish a task on deadline or maybe the deadline was going to be over tonight if you, if you just communicate as a leader 
or, in, or, 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 or by position, you will be acting like this. Hey, today is a deadline. Do not forget the, the task. Get it done, okay? Otherwise, you have a big problem. Don't bring the team in a bigger problem. So that is what is a normal communication. But the same issues when you're going to communicate with empathy and appreciation, the, the same communication will be this. When you will be talking like this. Hey, thank you very much for your great work, what you did last week. That was amazing. But hey, uh, how is your progress so far about, about the task you are working on right now? We have, we, we have a deadline to finish that one. Will you be able to finish? If you can't finish by tonight, let me know what can I help you. You see, it's a completely different thing. So here, I'm going to give you two bonus thing in the end of the video. So keep watching the video. I'm going to give you two bonus. How to run this communication with empathy and appreciation. I'm going to give you two solid example for you, which you will be able to see in the end of the video. So keep watching, okay? Those two are coming to you with example. So now, the tip number four. When you want to be a leader, when you want, when you already be a leader, or when you are you want to be a bigger team leader, the key is for you since morning, since you go to bed, is the one responsibility, 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 and responsibility. Everything happens to your team. Every success of your team, every failure of your team, every team member fall apart, every team member got recruited, every team member did a not completed the work. Every team ever did an amazing work. Everything is your your responsibility. Your responsibility. Everything you take back. So like me, even in VSHR, everything happens to, to our organization. Every member does what? It's all my responsibility. Why? Because if, if I give something to, to a team member and that team member fail to do it, that means I, the one, choose to give the task to the wrong person. So the same to you. You got to take the responsibility. You need to be really responsible of everything rather than blaming the anyone else. You have to take responsibility because when you are like it, you are like it as a leader, you are like a last line of defense of your team. You are like the last line of defense of your team. So that means when you fail, the whole thing failed as well too. So how can you fight back? The way to fight back of this one is you take responsibility and you make sure that you always on track and you always alert and you always engage and keep communicating with empathy and appreciation. So this is the something you really need to deep dive on your heart and your brain that responsibility. This is something you need to practice over and over and over. The same time is as a leader, you will be leading the communication with your any particular mentor of your team. So this is something very, very important for you as well. So when when you are working with your mentor, you really need to lead the relationship development of your mentor. If you just straight coming to the lead, a mentor and asking, 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 rather than giving anything else, the relationship is very different. I'm going to put a video here, how to work with the mentor. Watch that one. And as many times as you watch, more you're going to learn because that's a lot of information into that video. So I'm going to put it here, watch the video and practice it day by day. So. As a leader, you are going to take every possible final decision of your, of your team. You're getting your team in, girl, but mentor is someone is outside of your team. Mentor is not your team and mentor will come and give you some questions. Maybe will give you some challenges as well too. But mentor decision, mentor is, should not be giving any decision. Even some mentor giving you a decision, you should not be just saying, yes, sir, no. You don't want to be yes sir for that because mentor is not a part of the team. They are saying it from out of the box. Even mentor is not cooperating with you or giving a lot of cooperation with you. It doesn't matter. Every team decisions, every project decision you're going to make is your responsibility. You are going to take the decision and you're going to get it done. This is your responsibility, not your teammates responsibility as much as you and definitely not the responsibility of mentor. So do not ever misposition the, the role of the mentor. It's a mentor, not a decision maker, not a solution giver. You and your team are the solution creator and you are the one finally making the call by getting the team together.
So it's very important being responsible. So these are the four tips. These are the four tips what I'm giving to you. Let's execute these four tips from today because what you have just learned in this clip, let's get it and execute it from today. And, and then you will see in next few weeks, you have some dramatic change in your leadership, the way you feel about your team, success or even failure, it's, it's, it's going to be very important. So getting back to this one too, every team you need to fail. Why I have to fail, right? Because if you're not failing, there are two reasons. One, you have not set the goal high enough. And secondly, you're not trying enough to set a bigger goal. If you're not failing, that means you are not learning. So you gotta be failing as well too. And learn quickly from that one and fight back. That's the thing. When there is a failure happen, learn quickly and fight back. So that's come from your responsibility too. So these are the, the four, four tips again in the summary. Number one, pick the most difficult task of your team. Number two, give credit to your teammates. Number three, communicate with empathy and appreciation. And number four, be the most responsible person in the team. And every, everything happens to your team is you are the response for that. And now is the time for the bonus. I told you I'm going to give you two examples how to run communications with empathy and appreciation. I'm going to put two videos here and here. Watch these two videos and go through deep dive into it. Don't just watch for watching. Watch with the feeling. Watch with your heart. Watch with your brain. And you feel it how the empathy and appreciation has been utilized in the com communication because that's what creates a team towards success. And you want to take your team to the success, right? So let's watch those two demo and let's do it. And I'm looking forward to see you a bigger to bigger to bigger to leader. All the best.